Good morning to you from Deer Park United Methodist Church in Westminster, Maryland. I want to welcome you to our Easter service this morning. I also want to say hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and we can celebrate today. Even though uh, this Easter is different than any Easter we've ever done, uh, we don't have people in the pews. I'm here with just one other person. Uh, Keenan Hudson is with me to do our music, and uh, we're doing Easter differently this year, but we're doing it. Uh, Easter, Easter came, and Easter is here. We can celebrate and rejoice in what God has done through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to begin our service today with a hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Thank you for joining us this morning and being part of our service. Now I invite you to come and worship with us. This is the good news which we proclaim to you. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Walk in the light of his love. Live in the light of his teachings and, and healing mercies. Come, let us worship the one who overcame death. Let us celebrate the triumph of our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is Thine Be the Glory. Oh. 
sun conquering sun endless is the victory thou or death has won angels in bright raiment roll the stone away ever folded grave clothes where thy body lay I need the glory risen conquering sun endless is the victory thou or death has won lo Jesus meets thee risen from the tomb lovingly scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For our Lord now liveth, death has lost its sting. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death has won. No more without thee, glorious Prince of Life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy death. Safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou or death has won. gospel lesson this morning is from the gospel of John chapter 20 verses 1 to 18 early on the first day of the week while it was still dark Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved and said to them they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've laid him then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look. He looked in. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen, wrap, linen wrappings laying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? I do not know where they've laid them. When she had said this, she turned and around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Since Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I'll take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. 
her. Our, our anthem this morning is The Angel Rolled the Stone Away. <laughs> The angel rolled the stone away. The angel rolled the stone away. Twas on a bright and shiny day when the trumpet began to play. The angel rolled the stone away. My Jesus burned that dreadful tomb. My Jesus burned that dreadful tomb. Was on a bright and shiny day when the trumpet began to play. My Jesus burned that dreadful tomb. My Lord will come again for me. My Lord will come again for me. And on a bright and shiny day when the trumpet begins to play, my Lord will come again for me. This year, Easter falls during the COVID-19 pandemic, as we all know, a time when we're secluded in our homes and we're told to wrap our faces, faces in masks and cloths so we, we don't dare go out for groceries or supplies unless we really have to. We've been quarantined. You walk into the grocery store and you'll see people wandering quietly through the aisles with gloves on their hands and masked faces. You get too close, then you'll get a wide-eyed look of alarm at the face passing by. And they try to get as far away as possible. We're hiding from an invisible beast. The beast is what people are naming this virus. And it is, in a way, a beast. It, it attacks ferociously in the night with spike fevers and aches and lung binding and hallucinations. COVID-19 is a breathtaking virus. And it steals the breath from people's bodies in a particularly terrifying way. You can't breathe. It's scary. It strikes suddenly, leaving us frightened and breathless. With no cure in sight, the only thing we can do is hide away and covering our noses and faces with cloth, hoping to keep the aggressive beast away from our lungs. You feel isolated because COVID-19 is a death threat and it's already taken many lives. We have a right to be scared, but we also know who's with us. This brutal virus makes us feel like we're locked up in a tomb, and, and possibly for a long duration, though, though the darkness of Good Friday might go on forever, like little hope is in sight. We might still be thinking we're in the dark, and yet all around us, all around us, we see signs of spring, signs of awakening, signs of hope, Signs of resurrection. We know life as we know it may be dampened for a while right now, but covered in what feels like funeral clothing sometimes, but yet the spring blooms eternal, and all around us the birds sing, the sun bursts, and out from the winter clouds trees bud, flowers unfurl, and the ground thaws, and God unwraps an entirely new landscape of color and life. But for now, we wait. I wonder what it must have felt like for Jesus uh, those three days in the tomb. We don't know if he was conscious or not of what was going on, uh, but he, he had to know the resurrection was imminent. He trusted God to do that. Uh, and yet he was waiting for the dawn to come that magnificent morning when the stone was rolled away and the sun streamed through into the dark tomb when the angel of the Lord removed the funeral cloth from Jesus' face and the Holy Spirit breathed again the holy breath of life into his lifeless body and made it rise like Ezekiel's bones from the valley of the shadow of death. Three days of darkness, then new and restored life. Not the same life, but a, a resurrected, restored life. Jesus was made new. In the Gospel of John, we read an especially detailed account of Jesus' resurrection. 
Uh, we read first and foremost that Mary Magdalene approached the tomb while it was still dark, very early in the morning. She didn't wait till the sun came up and wait till the news of Jesus' resurrection had spread around Jerusalem. Rather, Mary came with expectation after that third day while it was still dark, while all were still without hope, while the, the pall of death shrouded the land and her heart. And in the darkness, just before dawn, she found the stone rolled away and the grave opened. Can you imagine what she was thinking? From there, Mary ran to two other disciples and bade them to come and see, come and look. So Peter and the disciple Jesus loved came. And the first things they do is enter and find those linen cloths lying there. The ones that had covered Jesus' broken body, they, they noticed the face cloth wasn't with the other linen cloths, but it was folded up neatly and gently in its own place. And although the two disciples didn't really understand the idea of resurrection from the scriptures, they saw and trusted that their, what their eyes had perceived. They saw it firsthand, and all of this from looking at those cloths there in the tomb. Some were over here, the face cloth was folded by itself over here. Imagine that resurrection morning. I invite you to see what they saw. Imagine that tomb. Imagine the, the grave cloths, the funeral cloths lying there in the tomb. Imagine what Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel and Hosea had prophesied from the Old Testament years and years ago. And from those Old Testament scriptures, we can read, Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain and that they may live. So I prophesied and he commanded me and the breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet a vast army. The Lord said, I will put my spirit in you. You will live. The words of Ezekiel, the dry bones came to life. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life. Those are words from Daniel. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise up that we may live before him. That's from prophecy of Hosea. Just as God's spirit hovered over the waters and on the third day brought forth land out of the water and on the next third day, the sixth, brought humans up from the dust. That's from Genesis. You probably recognize those verses. Isaiah says, my soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. But your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while. From Isaiah 26. In God's time, in Cairo's time, this isolation and hiding is only a little while. I know for us it seems like a long time, but in, in God's eyes it's just a blip on the, on the whole progress of eternity. We need to be patient, my friends. We, we need to wait for God. Enjoy what God is doing already, and we anticipate what God is going to do through this particular crisis we're going through. And we read it again in Genesis, and the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Genesis 2, 7. And then it's acknowledged by, by Job after his long and, and really hard, difficult time that he went through, all kinds of afflictions and pain. He says, the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Job rejoiced even after his long and really difficult struggle, much harder than what we're doing right now. And Mary saw what the prophets dreamed. She had heard the prophecy. She had read the scriptures. She knew the Torah. She knew all of that stuff. And now she was seeing it really happen. Can you imagine how excited she must have been? I, I have a hard time grasping that, what it might be like. The disciples realized that when the stone was rolled away and the darkness opened, darkness opened to the light, the cloth from Jesus' face had first to be removed so that the breath of God could breathe life into his body and raise him up. 
The gentle and loving folding of that cross feels both intimate and beautiful in this resurrection story. Think about that, that the cloth was folded very neatly as if it was folded by someone who must have loved Jesus. So it was God who gazed down and saw his tortured son, who removed and folded that cloth from Jesus' nostrils and his mouth and declared death defeated. I want to say that again. He declared death defeated that day, that morning, in that tomb. He said, rise up, Jesus. You got work to do. You need to show people what I've done. You need to show that this is real. You need to let their faith be rewarded and encourage them to carry on. That's what God does. That's what Jesus does. And thank God for his blessings on us all. He must have filled that cave with heavenly light as he lifted Jesus up and stood him on his feet. He must have refreshed and restored that body that had been beaten and tortured and took away the pall of death a new human being began with Jesus there. He had been revived in resurrection. At, at that, the rest of his clothes must have fallen from his limbs and torso as he stood up on the cave floor and exited the tomb. He was no longer entombed. He was no longer in the grave. He was alive, fully alive. After the two disciples left the tomb, tomb Mary remained there. She stayed, and when she looked into the tomb, she was bathed in holy light. Two angels of God at both head and the foot of where Jesus had, had been laid uh, were there like an afterglow of God's breath. When she turned around, she saw Jesus, his body fresh with life, and yet not as before. But in that moment, she knew that everything would change. All her hopes affirmed, all her fears relieved. So today, as we celebrate Easter morning, resurrection means so much more than it did before. I hope you, I hope you can feel that and see that in this, this Easter, this year, in 2020. For we've been living in darkness and confined to a tomb-like existence in our own homes of all places. Life as we've known it has stopped and we don't go out to work, we don't go out to play, we hide our faces and guard our hands and, 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 and walk around zombie-like through our homes and on our streets, frightened and covered in our own kind of funeral clothes so that the breath of death might pass us by, that invisible breath-stealing beast that threatens us and keeps us locked away for a time. But it's only for a time. We wait and we watch for this to pass. But we need not fret and cry out. We need to trust in God, knowing that he's going to bring us through. But life is waiting, merely that it's a time of waiting, and that's all it is. As much as we hate to wait, we can wait. And we all probably need to learn to do a better job of waiting, especially when we're waiting for God. God's resurrection breath will raise us up and a new day will dawn very, very soon. You'll see. Mary's faith kept her expectant and waiting, watching for something new to change, something miraculous to happen. She may not have known when or exactly how, and I'm sure she didn't, but she was hoping that God would come through and that, that light would somehow break through the darkness. I've often thought about how the realization of Resurrection washed over the disciples. Mary initially thought that the authorities had taken his body away and disposed of it. Uh, it took Jesus appearing before them and uh, her and the disciples several times before they realized that this was real. It didn't come all at once. It took a series of appearances of Jesus for them to really accept and absorb what had happened. But maybe that's our problem too. We, we're so slow to, to recognize what God is doing. He gives us miracles that we don't even notice sometimes. Or else we try to explain them away. It was just some luck. We had some good luck. What you had was a hand of God on you when these good things came to you. And you thought you earned it yourself. No, it was God. It was God. Do I go out wrapped in garments or do I take the grave clothes off? We're thinking, is it safe to go out of my house? Can I go to the grocery store without getting ill, getting sick, or dying. 
We're living in a frightened world. My son goes to work every day at the grocery store with gloves on his hands and a mask over his face. He comes home scared, and I can understand that. He deals with many people coming through and this checkout line every day, even though the plexiglass shield is up there, the germs are still there, the virus is possibly there. Yet God is protecting him. I pray for him every day. I ask you to pray for him too. My son is named Adam. Uh, he's in God's hands. I can tell you that Mary and the disciples realized what had happened, that, that life had been restored and God's promise had been fulfilled. The resurrection was here, and they found the courage to open the doors, not just to that tomb, but to open the doors to the locked rooms where they'd been hiding, to go out once again. It never would, They knew it all changed. Things were different. It wasn't going to be like it used to be. You can't go back to the way it was. Their future changed, and never again would they sit on the hillside to listen to him speak among crowds of people. That time had passed. That was before a new life and a new time had dawned. Now I'm with it, a new kind of spirit and a new kind of people. God's people were changing because God was making it happen. You too are resurrection people. You and me, watch and wait, people of God. Be expectant like Mary that dawn is coming and when it comes, your face cloths will be removed too and you will breathe freely again through the breath of God. The spring see all around you will manifest in all kinds of ways. Uh, I'm out there every day and I see the new buds on the trees, new blossoms coming out, and just the beauty of it all, the birds are just singing their hearts out, praising God as they fly through the air. Know the joy of relationships and friends, and, and you'll again eat together and sing together and worship together, I pray, together and love together right here in our church. And in a word, there is resurrection happening right now. I hope you can see it. I hope you can feel it. This is just a time, a short time of waiting for us all. It will be new. And never again will life be the same again for any of us. I hope it isn't. I hope we've learned a lot from this time of waiting and being a part that we'll appreciate being together even more. That we will love each other even more. And value these relationships we form, not just in our church, but in our families and in our neighborhoods. Let's appreciate one another and truly love one another as God teaches us to do. We can become more joyful about life and more appreciative of everything in it. We can become resurrection people. We can depend on the breath of God. It, it reminds me of the old hymn. We call upon the breath of God in the old hymn that says, Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew and that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, uh, until with thee I will be one will and to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, shall I never die, but live with thee in perfect life of thine eternity. Fill me with life anew until my heart is pure, until the earthly part of me glows so that I shall never die. I can only live for and in you. My God, what he has done. I know we celebrate it every year, but we need to remember it every day. Resurrection is coming. The signs are all around us. You need to watch and wait and listen for that breath. God's breath upon you. Long for that change. Wait for it to come, but... but Get excited about it coming. Celebrate the Lord who gives us life and restores life now and always. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing glory of our risen Lord who, who makes new every day. Especially, we thank you for the beauty of your creation and the new creation in Christ and all the gifts of healing and forgiveness those we have already had and ones we anticipate coming. We thank you for the sustaining love of family and friends and the fellowship of faith in your great church. Lord, we thank you for our fellowship and connections in our congregation, even though we can't be together right now. Our people are scattered out into their homes, in hiding, 
and in, in solitude, some of them, and in isolation. But still we pray together. We come together as one body, your body, the church, as we offer you the prayer that you taught us to pray. And I invite everyone listening to pray with us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Next hymn is Alleluia. Breathe on us, breath of God. May we feel your holy breath upon us right now. May you keep our lungs strong that we may survive this virus. We ask you to be with all those who are afflicted. Keep us all in your prayers. I will be praying for all of you. Pray for one another. Call one another. And please call me if you need help, Lord everybody. I would love to talk to you, to more of you than I have. And now as we prepare to go back out into the world this Easter morning, go back to our homes, may all the joy and excitement of this day go with us, and may the power of Christ's resurrection go with us. May the good news of this wondrous day go with us, and may we in the days of heads sing and pray and live and love and act and serve for the glory of God. A joyous Easter it is. Amen. Go forth. Wash your hands.